Okay, hello guys, we're back today with AP Chemistry 2023 FRQs. AP Chem exam took place on May 1st, 12 p.m. So it has definitely been two days since that exam, since it's May 24th now. Um, we'll be going over this now. Also looking over back over my AP World History video. I did, saw that my face cam was actually in the way of the questions. So sometimes it would be blocked. So now I'm just gonna uh, actually hold on. Let me open it first. Yeah, open it first right here. I was unaware that my cursor was not seen in the video. So if you could just follow along, I guess, or try your best, follow my explanation, especially during that curve question. Uh, if you want to ask questions in the comments and discuss amongst yourselves, I'll try to help out. So I apologize for that recording and I don't really feel like re-recording it. Enjoy. And then I'm going to move my face cam right here so you can actually... Look at the answer choices properly. Okay, then we can get started now. I won't actually be doing any math because I don't feel like it. And you again, you can always check for answers. I'm pretty sure you already saw the answers if you're really that curious online. All I'm doing is giving my opinion how I think I did on the test, what I put, and as well as going over the answers as well as I can remember them. Alrighty, then. All right. First question of seven. This one is the first four are pretty long. And then the uh, no, the first this, the first three are long and then the other four are pretty short. Manganese has several common oxidation states. OK, yada, yada. OK, it has several common. OK, write the complete electron configuration for an mang manganese atom in the ground state. OK, so for that, we would go to P table, which would you actually. Why would we even go in here when we have it above here? So if we're looking at manganese, you know what? We're just going to flip it over. Um, manganese is right here. Right where? Right here. Um, so we will do 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3d5. So it would be... Uh, the last two would be 4s2, 3d5. And so, okay, that would just... That's the answer. That's literally the answer. What I just said. Um, and so when manganese forms cations, electrons are lost from which subshell first? Identify both the number and letter associated with the subshell. So this one was actually apparently very tricky. I got this right, but I heard a lot of people didn't. So when you think of electron configuration, you want to still think of the big numbers first. So like given that 3D5 goes after 4S2, 4S2 is still the outer shell, right? Which is why another way of writing it would be 1s2, um, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5, 4s2. That's another way of writing electron configuration, in which case it makes it clear that 4s2 is the outer one. So the correct answer for this question would have been 4s. 3d is incorrect, so 4s is the right answer. Okay, next question is, student performs an experiment to produce manganese salt of unknown composition, MNXCLY, aqueous, and determine its empirical formula. Student places a sample of MN in the beaker containing excess HCl is present by the following equation, yada yada. Student hears, heats the resulting mixture only MNCLY remains in the beaker. Data are given a build following table. Here's the numbers. Calculate the mass of Cl in the sample of MNCLY remaining in the beaker okay so for this all you will do is mass of beaker and mnxcly after heating to a constant mass and okay mass of beaker and mns okay so what you would do is calculate the mass of um cl in the sample of remaining in the beaker so mass of beaker and mnxcly okay that's pretty obvious so what you would do is you'd take this number and you'd subtract it by this number and you'd get your CL value. So which would be around like, what is it? 1.4 ish or something. Okay. That's the mass of CL in a sample because mass of beaker and MNX CLY after heating to a constant mass, if it's this and if the mass of beaker and this will be conservation of mass, you got to think about it like that. So this is the mass of beaker and MN and the manganese solid. So the remaining mass, the difference is what the chlorine chloride would be. So yeah, that would be in grams. I'll cover sig figs in a second, which I think is why I lost a lot of points on this exam. But okay, 
calculate the number of moles of Cl in the sample. What you would do is you would go for molar mass of chloride and you would see that it's 35.45. And what you would do upon that is difference grams. Um, okay, sorry about that. You would take the grams and you would multiply by the molar mass. So it would be uh, whatever the difference is times one over 35.45 grams. Um, yeah, and that you get your moles. Sig figs, okay, guys. Sig figs, like I don't, I think I messed up on sig figs because I didn't really go with the proper amount, and I just felt whatever I felt like it, like stopping or sig fig. I wrote a lot of sig figs, but you shouldn't be losing points on sig figs, is what my teacher told me, if your answer is correct. So they might take off one point for sig figs in general of the entire FRQ section, and then the rest you should get credit. I'm hoping he's right because I did a lot of sig figs mess up. Um. Okay, D, the student determines that 0 0.0199 mole of manganese was used in the experiment. Use the data to determine empirical formula of the manganese CL. All right, so if we do our math right, 62.673 minus 61.262 gives you a value. And that divided by 35.45 will give you, sorry about that, my phone's buzzing off okay 62.673 minus 61.262 it gives you a number you divide that by 35.45 molar mass of chloride and you get your moles of chloride if i'm right it should be 0 0.0399 is what the answer is let me quickly come from that 2.6 3 uh, 37 uh 36 oh 73 my bad 73 uh, minus 61.2 is it 61.262 gives you that number uh, uh, divided by 35.45 okay yeah it does give you 0 0.0398 close enough it rounds up to let's say this runs out to 0 0.02 that rounds up to 0 0.04 so for every one mole of manganese there's two moles of chloride meaning the empirical formula is mncl2 so there we go that's the answer you do some math of course too show proof or justification for your answer. Student repeats the experiment using the same amounts of MN and HCl and notices that some of the MNCL splatters out of the beaker as it is heated to dryness. Will the number of moles of Cl calculated for this trial be greater, less than, or equal to the number calculated in part C? Obviously, it will be less than. Why? Because some of the MNCL Y, MNXCLY will be gone, you know, spilled over. So we would get less mass of MNCL and thus get less mass of Cl moles all right a little bit of electrochem or thermal application of thermal if you want to call it that another compound of manganese mno2 is used in alkaline batteries presented by the following diagram some half reactions are given in the table based on half reactions given in the table write the balance that ionic equation for the reaction that has the greatest thermodynamic favorability you would take the um greatest reduction potential um which is the cathode this one minus the least which is this one so it would be 0 0.15 minus negative 1.28 which would um yeah which would give you a very a bigger number like the most thermodynamic favorability and so it's a balanced net i yeah net ionic reaction what you would do is you, you just begin canceling these out okay you would flip it first of all and then you would cancel out so they um, if you flip this one, or whichever one you flip over, the electrons would cancel out, um, liquid water would cancel out, um, M2MNO solid would remain, because that's also the product. I mean, that's not the product, but it's not up here. So, okay, what it would be is, this would be flipped over, the 2OH would cancel out, so the net ionic would look like 2MNO2 solid plus zinc solid yields um, MN2O3 solid and the zinc oxide solid. So that would be your net ionic. Calculate the value of E cell for the overall reaction. Um, this is easy. 0.15 minus negative 1.28. What, what is that? That's like 1.43. Yeah, that's your E cell. Um, okay. And then calculate the value of um, where it gives free energy in kilojoules per mole. For that, we just go up 
um, read this. We're dealing with two moles of electrons. You know, the Faraday's constant, you know this. Um, so, I don't know, oh, where, where are we at? Okay, there we are. Okay, and we know the E cell. So, it would be 1.43, 1.43 times 96485 times 2, negative 2, let's say negative 2 because that negative applies, and we get a number. However, column is mole per mole of electrons. One column is over one joule over one column is one volt. Okay. And we're dealing with volts, so okay, let's let's I might have to write this down, but I don't really feel like doing it. So ninety six four eight five um let's flip these. Joules per volt. We multiply it by volts from the E cell. Um, we get 96485 times 1.43 times negative 2 for mole of electrons. Coulombs. Yeah, since we're doing v volts, we're doing joules, okay? So I guess that's the important thing I want to know, joules. It's asking us in kilojoules. So final answer, what do we do? We just divide it by 1,000. So that would give us in kilojoules per mole, RxN. This one I got wrong, sadly. Student claims that the total mass of alkaline battery decreases as the battery operates because the NO loses mass. Do you agree with the student's claim? Justify your answer. It would not decrease because uh, conservation of mass, it would always stay in there. So I guess conservation of mass is the primary answer that we're looking for. I said that I said something entirely else. I think I said that it loses math at a cathode. So anyway, I got that wrong. But uh, most of question one, I think I got it right. Gas phase AlCl3 is a molecular substance. A reaction of gaseous AlCl3 at high temperatures represented by the following balanced equation. We have the equation. Okay. How many grams of Cl can be formed from 1.25 mole of AlCl3? How many grams? Okay. 1.25 mole of AlCl3 will form three times that of Cl gas. So like 3.75 moles times um, one mole of Cl yields 35.45 grams. It's just simple algebra, you know, dimensional analysis, cancel out, you get your answer. Okay, a little bit of Hess's law. What do we do? Okay, we calculate um, using two, three, four, okay. So, to get this, we have to use these and then just add them up. So, AL, solid, um, we don't really need this, so we'll flip this one, cancel out. Actually, gas would be on that side, so we would actually flip this one, because we need this gas on the left side. So, this one will turn positive. Um, then we have, okay, so this one we flip, and this one... We, we don't flip this one, do we? We don't flip this one. We div we multiply this by three over two, this number, which would give us the three CL, and also get rid of this, this right here. So we flip this one, multiply this by three over two, and then keep this one. Add them all up, we'll get our answer. In kilojoules per mole Rxn. Potential energy diagram for Cl2 shown in the following graph. Based on the graph, bond length in picometers for Cl2 bond. Okay, so bond length, you just look at where the peak is. Peak is at 200 picometers. So that's your answer, 200. You just put 200. Average ALCO bond is 220 picometers and the average bond energy is 425 kilojoules per mole. Potential energy, what you would want to do is 220. So right here, 425, it's, uh, right here. So it would look very similar to that curve, but it'd go up about here, a little bit to the right of it. Um, the peak would be a bit lower, and then it would just start equalizing like this, about the same. So if you draw something similar to that, you should be good. LCO3, trigonal planar geometry, which diagram can be eliminated based on geometry, just by your answer. Alrighty. 
which can be eliminated this one why because it's not a trigonal planar this is a tetrahedra it's got one lone pair and three atoms bonded to it something like that along the lines diagram two is gone because of those reasons you should get the point which of following three diagrams is the best representation for the bonding in alcl3 justify your choice based on formal charges um diagram three is best why because aluminum has got um actually is diagram three best i think i said diagram one didn't i oh yeah i did say diagram one why because um each of them has zero formal charge chloride has got one two three four five six seven one two three seven seven aluminum's got three here is just too much aluminum's got four which is like negative one chloride has got here six which is plus one here it's got seven i mean yeah it's just diagram one just has less formal charge that adds up to zero LCO3 is known to dimerize reversibly in gas phase. The numerization equilibrium is represented by the following equation. Write the expression for equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction. Easy. Partial pressure of this over partial pressure of the squared. Boom. That's it. It would just be Kp equals PLAL2Cl6 over PLCO3 squared. So it's not that hard. Particle diagram, drawn, closed container, temperature specified. Using the particle level diagram to calculate the Kp for the reaction of the total pressure in the container is 22.1 atm. This is a little bit of mathy one, but um, let's see. Two, three. We got three of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Wait. One, two. Seven of these. So, 10 moles in total. Um, 7 out of 10, multiplied by that, that gives you the partial pressure of this gas. 3 out of 10 times that gives you the partial pressure of that gas. Um, then you just plug those partial pressures in the expression we calculated right here. And you should be good to go, I think. Right? Yeah. That's says 22.1. Not that hard. I think. Hmm. They did give us those numbers, so I don't think we need them, though. Let's go up quickly. Um, PV equals NRT. We got volume. We got moles. We got temperature. We got R. Yeah. I mean, that's just unnecessary since they give us the pressure. Question three. Balance that ionic. This would stay together because it's solid. HCO would, you know, dissociate because it's a strong acid. Which means this would dissociate um, to just carbon 2 plus. Um, CO2 would stay same gas, liquid. They will just stay put. It would just be hydrogen. Chloride would be gone. So not that hard. Just remove chloride from the, um, from the reaction and you're good to go. Uh, what is this? Uh, student correctly identifies that trial 5 is inconsistent. With other trials, explain why students' claim is correct using data in the table. Okay. Uh, why? Because why is large chunk having a quicker reaction rate than small chunks? Small chunks will have a higher, um, lower time of reaction, as we can see right here. Um, see? Fine powder, 67 seconds, pretty fast. Small chunks, a little bit longer. Large chunks, even longer. Here, this pattern does not meet. Also, small chunks have greater surface area than large chunk. So they should actually react faster. So you could say something along those lines for the point. Based on the reaction conditions and collisions that occur between particles, explain the reason for the difference in reaction time to trial two and trial, and trial to three. Okay, same thing. Surface area. Small chunks have larger surf collective surface area than large chunk. So that's why they react faster. Student claims that reaction is zero order with respect to HCl. Do you agree or disagree? Hmm... You, di you would disagree, and the reason for that is, um, hold on, okay, yeah, the reason you would disagree is because actually changing the concentration changes their time of reaction, which actually just says that it's not zero order, it actually has an order, if you want to, I think for actually getting the point, which I didn't do, but you could divide this by this, and figure out that it's actually a uh, second order, because, um, by, no, first order, what am I saying, because, by, yeah, 
because by tripling the concentration, the time is cut in third. So, yeah. Wish I could answer this one. There is an answer on the internet, but I didn't get this one right because I just left it blank. Um, why? Because I actually uh, began to think that you need to use the integrated rate law somehow in that one, which would be these ones. I was way off. A lot of pressure on that test, so I just left that one blank and moved on. But what you would do here is this gives away sort of the fact that it's not a read lie, it's actually um simple stoic stoichiometry problem. So HCO was present next to the no trials of the experiment, determine the molarity of the HCO in the beaker after the reaction is complete in trial two. Yeah, you can find the answer online. I I I love this one blank, sadly, but one point is on two points actually that could be two points worth it's fine okay continue question three measure the enthalpy of the reaction student repeats trial one by mixing 15 milliliters hto with one gram of car yeah cacl3 actually that's calcium i said car i said carbon back then didn't i it's calcium i'm tripping i'm very tired Using a coffee cup calorimeter, the student records the temperature of the system every 20 seconds, the data given in the following table. Okay, time increasing, temperature increasing. Is reaction endothermic or exothermic? Correct answer is exothermic, despite people thinking as temperature increases because it takes in energy, but it's exothermic because energy is lost to the surroundings and so temperature increases. Kind of a weird like reasoning, but that's literally it. Uh, based on experimental data, the mass of the system is 51 grams and the specific heat of the reaction mixture is 4 joules per gram Celsius. Calculate the magnitude of heat transfer Q in joules. All right, we'll just go to the formula sheet. Plug some numbers in. Q equals MCAD. We got the mass. We got the joules. I mean, we got the specific heat. C is the specific heat. Okay. And temperature change is 21.9. Wait, M cat. Okay, temperature change, specific heat, and mass. Okay. We don't care about time. But we do know the temperature change 21.9 minus 21.2, that's 0 0.7. 0 0.7 times 4 joules per gram per Celsius times 51 grams. Yeah, they'll give you your magnitude. Do report your magnitude in positive value, even if it's negative. So that's an important thing to know. Calculate the enthalpy of reaction in units of kilojoules per mole. Include the algebraic sign. What you would do is you would divide it by a thousand to get it to kilojoules. Mole RxN, you do something with this calcium carbonate right here. I, since I didn't get this question right, I didn't get this one either because apparently you have to do one more operation, which is multiply by the moles of calcium carbonate. And the algebraic sign would be negative because it's exothermic, as we decided here. So it's question three. Question four. Oh, God. Um, buffer solution. Okay. CH3 and H2, CH3 and H3, CL, student uses 25 milliliters, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Calculate the mass that contains 0 0.00250 CH3 and H3Cl. That's easy. Find the molar mass of this, mul uh, multiply it by that, and you're good. Simple dimensional, uh, dimensional analysis. Okay. Procedure. Okay. Ooh. Okay. The following table contains a partial procedure for making a buffer solution. Steps 1 and 4 to complete the procedure using only materials and equipment from choices given. Procedure 1, okay. For procedure 1, I went with small spatula. I went with weighing paper. I went with electronic balance. And... Yeah. Weighing paper, small spatula, electronic balance, and I measured out the solid however much of it was needed uh, how much was of it was needed place the solid in the 50 milliliter beaker distilled water electronic balance okay 
Oh, I'm tired. Okay. Um, you would measure out the solid. Um, how much of it, though? Okay, I forgot how much of it. My bad, but um, you would use a small spatula weighing paper and electronic balance to make sure that you actually get the weight of the solid rather than the rather than get paper of I mean the weight of the weighing paper. You don't want that in your procedure, so that's why you would ba uh, zero the electronic balance with weighing paper on there. Add the solid, and yeah, solid CH three and H three Cl. How much of it though? I mean, I think you can figure this out, but uh. Um, oh, you'll probably, yeah, you'll probably just use this mask right here you calculate. My bad. Yeah, that's what you put in step one. Step four, I got step four wrong. I think apparently you have to like, um, rinse the burette with the base, I believe, so that it doesn't like. 25.2, okay. This one was an interesting step. Because you actually apparently had to, like, rinse it with, um... Not 0.1 molar. Uh, uh, you have to rinse it with something. I, okay, yeah, you're rinsing it. I, I got it wrong, I think. You'd rinse it to ensure that there's no... That there's no material that actually affects the pH. So, I think I said that you have to um, use the graduated cylinder to add a little over 25 milliliters of CH3 and H2 to the pure red, upon which you would then add it to the beaker, but not sure. This one was real simple, um, very conceptual rather than mathematical. Second buffer uses 25 mol milliliters of 0.05 molar, 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar. When you do the math, they're still equal, meaning that the second buffer will have pH of equal to the first buffer because they're equal molar. More gas. HCl is a molecular gas as a pure substance, but acts as an acid in aqueous solution. Sample HCl, um, we get, okay, we have the volume, we have the pressure, we have the temperature. Calculate the number of moles HCl in the container. You just use the PV equals NRT formula. I'm not going to solve it right now, but you just plug in P, 7.45 volume, 6 liters. And that's what we don't know are the constant specifically constant let me i guess i can just point it out quickly um yeah we'll do this one of course not this one this one's for thermal we'll do we'll go with this one liters atm mole per mole per kelvin so you now you plug in for r and then you plug in the temperature yeah plug in 296 you get your moles Cool to temperature, new pressure, and ATM. Okay, we know this is where. Um, well, I don't want to update. My bad. Okay, um, this is where we would know the volume. We wouldn't know the pressure. We know the moles. We know the R, and we know the T. Simple algebra. Cancel out and figure out for a variable. Oh boy, this question was easy. I wonder who got it wrong. <clears throat> Not saying any names, but. Okay, when HCl ionizes in aqueous solutions, Cl minus ions are formed in the following box. Draw three water molecules with proper orientation around the Cl minus ion. Use Mickey Mouse or water molecules to represent water molecules. Okay, what you would do is just you draw three of them. It says three. So what you would do is you would, uh, those black circles, which represent the partial positive hydro... No, wait. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, partial positive hydrogens because the... Um, Electrons are pulled towards the oxygen. The black circles would face towards the CL without actually touching it. And then you just draw three of them around the CL ion. This one's pretty easy. 
I'm not gonna read it. Um, Marcus Minimated for Cuddy. Which asset is represented below? Well, we know that um, only one hydronium ion is present and the rest of the HA acids are still there, undissolved. What this means is that it doesn't dissolve very well. It's a weak acid, and out of the three, this is the weak acid that has five that has a very low Ka value compared to the other ones. So it would be a channel two based on the quantity of undissolved acids. Six following table lists types of intermolecular forces HBr, HF, HBr, um, London dispersion, and dipole dipole. I guess that's the obvious ones. And then for this one is London dispersion, dipole dipole, and hydrogen bonding since it's bonded to uh, fluoride, oxygen, or nitrogen. In this case, it's fluoride. Okay, more, let's see. Yeah, more thermal. EP, based on the types and relative structure of intermolecular forces, explain why um, vapor heat of vaporization of HF is greater than that of HPR. Okay, well, this is obvious. Use this. Hydrogen bonding is very is one of the strongest intermolecular forces, and thus it has a stronger, I mean, it requires more energy to break a mole of HF compared to HBR. Calculate the amount of thermal energy in kg required to vaporize 6.85 grams of HF. Okay, you do the molar mass, right? So um, molar mass of HF is like, what, 1.008, and then F is like... God, do I really have to go to periodic table? 19, okay, so that's like 20. So you do, um, where is it, right here? You'll do 6.85 grams times one mole HF over, over 20 grams. You get your moles, and then you get your kilojoules from those moles by multiplying by 25.2. And you get your answer. In terms of sig figs, I screwed up on sig figs, so there's that. Based on the arrangement of electrons in Br and F atoms, explain why the bond length in an HBr molecule is greater than in an HF molecule. Well, if we go to back to periodic table, we can see that it said HBr is longer, right? Hold on. Yeah, HVR is longer. Um, why? Well, because it's got a greater um, electron cloud and uh, what is it called? It's not ionization energy, but the bond length, it occupies more subshells. You could also say that because this goes all the way to 4P. Um, this is the fluoride. Fluorine is only um, what is it, 2P. So you couldn't make that an argument, but yeah. Basically, hydrogen remains the same, but this has changed, and the bromine is actually larger electron cloud and thus has longer bond with hydrogen compared to fluorine. Okay. Last question. Alrighty. Strontium hydroxide dissolves in water according to the following equation. KSP. Okay, KSP. We're dealing with a little bit of equilibrium now. Stern draws particulate diagram. Water molecules are intentionally emitted. Error. What's the error? Well, if you see, for every one strontium, there should be two hydroxides. This is not evident in the diagram because there's one hydroxide for every strontium, whereas there should be double the hydroxides. That's all you have to say. Student prepares a saturated solution, adding excess blah blah, just the water stirring no more solid dissolves. Student determines that SR2 plus equals 0 0.043 molarity. Mm -hmm. To calculate the value of OH, you just multiply that by actually. What did I put for this? I think it's double, yeah. Yes. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Because there's double OH for each strontium, you just multiply the molarity by two. And for KSP, you plug in that doubled value, square it, and then multiply it by this strontium molarity. So that's your two answers right there. Uh, student prepares the second saturated solution in aqueous strontium nitrate or nit yeah I think that's nitrate instead of water would the value of hydroxide molarity in the second solution be greater than less than or equal to the value in the first solution the value of OH will actually be less than why because of common ion effect and strontium already exists in there so yeah because strontium is dissolved from that compound right there 10 mol 10 molar of that strontium is already present less of strontium hydroxide will dissolve and thus produce less hydroxide Ooh, okay well, that was tiring but i've got it done uh, well this wasn't the best recap again this channel kind of covered it briefly it's kind of late to cover these because they released a long time ago I think there's other YouTubers or other people who have done a better job than me at explaining this. Um, I think I did good on this. Sick figs. I'm not sure about sick figs. I'm just hoping they'll let me slide if let us slide if we properly got the answer, but with an incorrect number of sick figs. But we'll see. We'll see. There's better stuff out there, trust me. There's like answers with specific work done to show, but this is just my discussion of the FRQ and what I put for them and whether it's hard or easy, so. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Probably covering AP Statistics FRQs next. Peace.